Hello, welcome to the Trash Walensky Show. And we're back here with my friend who's been with the Metropolitan Opera 15 years, Danielle, a wonderful voice and diction teacher and coach. And with Katrina, I don't even know, are you a soprano, Katrina? Mezzo soprano. Ah. Katrina Secchi. Ah, and you're Italian. Italian-American, yes. Italian-American. My American. parents were ah, born in Italy. You're Italian-American. I, <laughs> I figured that out, yeah. So what they're going to do now is maybe go into one or two more techniques and elaborate on what it is to be a coach and singer and go through this instruction and this coaching and this diction and sort of make it and, and lay it out for us laymen at home and he here in the studio. It's yours, Danielle. Thank you. Well, uh, Josh brought uh, an interesting uh, subject and a good question. What is the relationship like? How does it feel between the coach and the student, in this case, a professional operatic singer? Um, I think it's, it's first and foremost a relation of trust because an artist serves their instrument which is built in there, which is a gift and which is built in their body. So they have to trust the person that gives them direction and then they have to ma be made to feel the result, you know. Otherwise, it's logical to be discouraged and to not understand. Um, that really does not happen. People that are less experienced than, than Katerina sometimes um, have a little difficulty knowing where they are going and understanding the scope. But I had a very interesting experience a couple of months ago with a young lady, very professional, but you know, new in the business and extremely talented. And she very you know, docile in French, in a very obedient way, went through everything that we did together. And then when she sang the aria, she was getting, getting, getting ready for a competition. She was so extraordinary so much better in that particular aria than she was in the other arias with the same voice that she told me she wished she had taken that and she would have won the competition mm -hmm. so she understood by experience and i'm sure that when she has french again she'll be running so it's it's a relation relationship of trust it's a relationship of docility meaning to be open from the point of view of the student and to trust and that well you trust because you know the person is professional uh, you know them you s you sense that they have integrity and my job is to benefit the singer to benefit their instrument to make things, even though Josh said it's a lot of work, to make things ultimately much easier for them and more rewarding, amazingly rewarding. And I really don't do that. I uncovered that while being a teacher. I saw it written in the language and I started teaching it and I started seeing the results. And nobody does that, but uh, um, we enjoy doing it. So we enjoy the result, right, Katerina? Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Yeah, it's rewarding for a singer because there is nothing. Katerina used the word um, in another session we had here. She used the word, it's true, it's genuine. And it's exactly this. There is nothing fake about this relationship, Josh. It's, it's, it's one um, professional understanding the other. And I have an illustration for that, which is not exactly us, but I was given to observe conductors. And conductors notably are extraordinary musicians, but they have no voice. 
<laughs> so when they have the orchestra and they want something else, or they have a singer and they want something else, they make a gesture, you know. And as a matter of fact, it happened to me, and the, the singer comes out to exactly with what the maestro asked for. What is that? I have a cute little voice, but I don't have an operatic voice at all. And I do the same thing in rehearsal. Oh, give me more of this. You know. Understand exactly, they give it to me immediately. Mm -hmm. So there is between, you know, the teacher and, and the operatic singer a, real, a communication that is almost not verbal. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question, Josh? Yes. And Takaterina, uh, uh, what uh, Josh was asking also, uh, do you feel in this process, be it at the beginning or in the middle, or you know, that you have some challenges that you, you feel that you, you, because that I would know, you would know. Yes, indeed. Uh, especially in pieces that I may have done in, in past years, uh, microscopically off in placement, in uh, linguistic mm -hmm. placement. Mm -hmm. And the worst thing one can do is to repeat in a slightly wrong position. That's right. Because it becomes stronger and stronger and more vocal, but That's more right. incorrect. And then to, mm -hmm. to correct that little flaw is like putting the, the voice uh, or the, and the score under a microscope and turning the knob until everything comes into perfect focus mm -hmm. and then you are exactly on the wavelength that in you that need truth. to be on. In the truth. Yes. yes. And not microscopically off or, or more than microscopically. Because it gets, yes, people who have not studied um, this way, people who listen to recordings and it's a good thing to do. Uh, but it's not an answer. As I said uh, in the former session, we do not put people in a position where they are imitators. There's no harm in, uh, no harm in listening to someone who has done a beautiful interpretation and some recording is known for having good French. But I'll tell you one thing when we speak about truth. That person had a concept in their mind. They sang it, they produced the sound, it was recorded, and then you are listening to it. Mm -hmm. So you have four. It's like a translation of the Bible, how many times it has been translated. And people who study the book have to go to different translations. Okay? So that's the principle. And that's also the reward. It is a priceless reward because you're dealing with authenticity. It's written in the language. Mm -hmm. So you can in understand what the result will be. It will be phenomenal. It will be so more, much more gorgeous. Same voice, but you will get so much more out of your instrument. Mm -hmm. And that's, Josh, what makes it such a rewarding um, experience. And of course, who is going to appreciate? The operatic singer is going to appreciate. So many times I have been told, Daniel is much easier, you know? Because it, of the misconceptions that we spoke about in our last meeting, and uh, the misconceptions create opposition. And what do you do with it if you don't know what to do? You try to go around it, and you compromise, <laughs> and you cheat yourself because you don't know what you're doing. And you try to make these adjustments and you're you're pulling this way and you're pulling this way and you're getting off and if you don't know it's, it's like everything if you don't know exactly what is to be done mm -hmm. and what you are doing you're really not going anywhere no what impact does the plot and the physical action of the opera have on you as a drama coach well that addiction what uh, how are you involved in that well, uh, generally you have a stage director that gives directions, especially in a large house anywhere in the world, you have professionals that uh, stage and that's totally cogent with the action. 
but it befalls the singer to have worked at this and to have it so-called, uh, no pun intended, but under their belt. Mm -hmm. Let's say at the level of the diaphragm, they have to have it. So they have to have performed before, they have to become, and they don't stop growing. I worked with, um, in fact, someone in a Dalila also, and over the years when we would meet five years later to reread in the speech, not because solely of the French at all, by that time this particular person was free, but we would find either we matured or we would find new things, new emphasis about character. So it really is the work of the singer. And when you are blessed as we are to be involved with professionals, then there is no problem with the staging because the staging for an operatic singer as for an actress serves your character. And they, they, it's part of their work to, to fit in it. I'm not mm -hmm. trying to be humorous, mm -hmm. but if somebody is dying, they have to still come out with the high C's and everything. Of Isn't well, that a bit difficult? It's not difficult because uh, the, the, when you go to listen to an operatic singer, you expect them to sing. Okay, so what you are you are doing that translation yourself. Of course, realistically, we do understand that somebody dying is not going to sing, uh, you know, any note, <laughs> high, <laughs> middle, or low. Mm -hmm. but, <laughs> w but when you go see a rendition, it's like going to see uh, theater or listening to music uh, uh, and listening to a part. You're interested in the character, but you're interested in the sound, you know. You really are going there to listen to the voice, and the character has to be there. So. It's not a problem. Again, if you intellectualize it too much, then maybe if you intellectualize it too much, you shouldn't be there because you shouldn't be there <laughs> for that. You should be there to enjoy the art. And we all know that opera is a very complex art. Yes. And Danielle, you were an actress too. I am an actress. You're an actress. Yes, yes. I mm. was trained classically in Europe, but I was very young when I came to America. So uh, I could not pursue this. However, I was in a few movies, you know, and um, then I worked at the Met and, uh, you know, I had uh, my son to raise, so I went away a little bit, but I have it, I'm acting now, I'm, I'm, you know, I have it in my blood, I have to do it, and it makes me very happy. Mm. Like Katerina has to sing, birds have to sing. Yes. 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 That's it. And actresses have to talk, and you can see I have no problem talking. <laughs> and, and Katrina, you did several Italian operas? Oh, yes, yes. Many, many, many Italian operas with, with which I have absolutely no problem <laughs> linguistically. Yeah. And, of course. Uh, yeah. I, I find you, I, I have a wonderful uh, person with whom I work also who is an Italian. Uh, but uh, Danielle has really, really begun to correct my French and the, the long-standing, more than microscopic uh, mistakes in the, in the placement and yeah. pronunciation. And uh, it's been very, very liberating to, uh, to begin to treat the text in mm -hmm. a pure and genuine manner and without pulling out uh, artificial means to uh, maneuver it. To try to get there, <laughs> yeah. There Absolutely. is one thing I wanted to uh, quickly mention, is that uh, in this, uh, with all these vowels, there are two vowels uh, when an operatic singer sings, they have to be, um, it's the same vowel, but it has a different accent. And they have to differentiate them, and I will explain why. It's the unmute, but if the unmute has an accent that goes northeast, southwest, it's an accent aigu, that's A. And if the unmute is followed by two consonants or a double consonant, or it has a hat like a Chinese little hat, mm -hmm. then it's A. Mm -hmm. And A is related to drama, 
depth of feeling and transition. And A is the language of love. So not only an operatic singer has to differentiate them, but they, and they have to be faithful. It sounds very French. I think at one point you asked us, how do you know if it's good French? Well, we discussed that in a prior meeting. But one of the telltale signs is to make the differentiation. Be because, again, this is related to feeling and drama. And that's very important. And um, I would like you, Katerina, to look at, um, in the Werther, um, to look at Ces Lettres, Ces Lettres, in page 143, mm -hmm. which I believe is this one. Yes. And perhaps read a little bit. Um, I think it's the top of the page yes, somewhere. Right, yeah. Oh, it's there. Now, could you just read slowly? And uh, this is Charlotte, and she, is, she feels very badly because Werther is no longer there. And she reads, she's going to, she just read, it's Christmas, I think, and she just saw his letters, and she gets very sad. Many letters. Right. Mm -hmm. So could you read this, please? Ces lettres, ces lettres. Ah, je les relis sans cesse. Yeah, but the je is on a mute. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ah, je les relis sans cesse. Avec quel charme, mais aussi quelle tristesse. Oui, alors, mais aussi, hein? Mais aussi, mm -hmm. mais. Mm -hmm. Mais aussi, quelle tristesse. Je devrais les détruire, je ne puis. Voilà. I want to make a point, that's beautiful. I want to make a point, you will see how many A's there is, I will count them, ok? <laughs> Ces lettres, ces lettres. Ah, je les relis sans cesse. We are on six now. Avec quel charme, mais, we are on eight, mais aussi, quel, we are in nine, tristesse, we are in ten. Now, that's just about that much in the score. Yes. Ten is, what does that mean? A is related to depth of feeling, she's very sad, transition, she was, she was looking and not speaking, now she's mm -hmm. speaking, and sadness. You see how many A's? That's why I, if I call myself Valin, would ask the singer to acknowledge that, because it's written. And it's the, the doing it faithfully and with consciousness, conscious of it, not just going like this, saying words and not thinking anything of it, is sheer poetry and it's dynamite because that's the drama. What I call it, it's the bitter string of the violin when somebody suffers, when it goes, eh, you know, and this is, oh, this and that, eh, and then, eh, you know, and it's beautiful. So, I, d I hope that answers also some of your questions, Josh. Everything is linked, and that's what happens when you deal with truth. Now, um, we have another, ah, uh, yeah, so that illustrates, one, the necessity to differentiate the A from the A, and two, the importance to be um, faithful to what is written. As a singer is faithful to the note, the, f the singer should be faithful to the vowel above the note. They You're giving us the flavor of charm and charm of being very French, mm -hmm. and it's delightful. Wow. I'm enjoying it very much. Okay. <laughs> she's, uh, she's the <laughs> most French of 
Now, French you want ladies. to begin the other one, just to read a few? Yes. Et ne va la secouler mes larmes. And in that, there is an experience, there is an example of extraordinary poetry. Extraordinary poetry above music. So we, we, we have been speaking about the marriage of the, the color of the vowel with the note, but now we're going to see how the music supports and vice versa the poetry. And uh, all you have to do is uh, go, I want to hear, yeah, this is one that's, um, oui. that's right, so this would be perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Va laisse couler ma larme. Okay. Sweetheart, mm -hmm. you don't need to act it. Okay. Okay. Va laisse couler ma larme. Okay. Va laisse couler ma larme. That's much better. Yes. Elles font du bien. Elles font du bien. Ma chérie. Ma chérie. Uh, no, not ma chérie. Ma chérie. Ma chérie. Voilà. That's a closed day. Yes, yeah, absolutely. That's right. Ma chérie. Excellent. Les larmes qu'on ne pleure pas. Bon, alors, it's, it's good. Les larmes qu'on ne pleure pas. My larmes pleure are the same. Okay. okay. Les larmes qu'on ne pleure, pleure pas. Oui, c'est good. Pleure pas. You are acting again, it's not necessary. Les larmes qu'on ne pleure pas. Les larmes qu'on ne pleure pas. Oui. Dans notre âme. Oui. Uh, Caterina, the en is an easel, but it's still above my imaginary mm -hmm. line palette. Mm -hmm. So, dans, ok, not dans. Ok. Ok. No feet in the mud. <laughs> <laughs> dans, dans. Oui. Dans. Ben non, non, en italien, c'est comme dans, non. Non. Dans. Dans. Ah, oui, voilà. D'accord. Dans notre âme retombe toute. Et. Ok. Et. Et. et de. Ok. Uh, the the A for singing is a little tight. Mm -hmm. If you were singing the way you said, you may come out with E. And that's not good no. for an operatic singer. Mm -hmm. So. Eh, a bit, a bit of brass. Mm -hmm. Eh, mm -hmm. eh, okay. Eh, eh de leur patiente goutte, oui. Martel. Okay, you are a little low. Eh, de leur patiente goutte, Martel le cœur. Triste là. Ok. Et de leur patiente goutte. Good, bravo. Martèle le cœur triste et là. Oui. And then the next sentence. Um, uh, ok. Sa résistance enfin s'épuise. Le cœur se creuse et s'affaiblit. Il est trop grand. Rien ne l'emplit. Rien ne l'emplit. Rien ne l'emplit. Et est trop fragile. Tout le, le brise. Tout le brise. Excellent. Now, I uh, thank you so You're welcome. much. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, this is meant to have people understand the poetry. It's, uh, I know all the scores in French by, by heart. 
And this is something I think in my life all the time. The, the tears that you do not shed, okay, come back on the heart and with a patient thrust, okay, hit the heart, sad and tired. Of you course, know, the translation. I wanted to say, Daniel, I have a large, a large collection of Cadman records. And what we're doing here is reminiscent of my Cadman collection of spoken word. It's just wonderful, very beautiful. And I want to thank you, Daniel. Oh, this for was coming. a pleasure. And thank you. And I want to thank Katerina. Thank you, and I'm Josh. Gonna, like I always do on all my shows, I want both of you to have the final words, like in every great opera. Go ahead. Well, actually, Josh, I want to thank you, and Katerina, I want to thank you very much. You are a wonderful instrument and a great lady. Thank you so much. And a wonderful heart. And uh, I actually enjoyed myself. So, and uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to share with more people. Really, yeah. thank you so and much. Thank you. Uh, I enjoyed yeah. myself also. And uh, I let the audience see a work in progress, which is improving thanks to and I enjoy Daniel's wonderful I'm going to enjoy opera a lot more because I've learned you have some awareness bit. yeah and you, and you yeah the commitment and and you and, learn how much work so it is and, how much work yeah and I certainly will enjoy my french opera even more yes well if yes. you need me for anything I'll help you okay yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it will be my pleasure this summer I had fun watching that opera where these three singers uh, do uh, sing in bed, you know, the Comp, the Comfrey, is it the Comp by, uh, uh, Ro who Com is it? Comp Dohi. by Rossini, uh, the oui, oui. you know, and they're all singing in bed. Oh, I <laughs> didn't see that you, production. You saw that. I uh, didn't yeah. see it. I it's didn't see it. It's very funny, you know. But uh, yeah. they, they have uh, lots of Lots of, Lots of uh, interesting uh, things going on at the Met, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really wonderful. But we're, we're wrapping up. Uh, so if someone wants to see you, how do they, they, your phone I number is on I think that my phone number and my email were there are on the yes. screen. Oh, and good. Um, He's on the ball. There's your phone number and everything. Wow. That's right. That's yes. right. And a beautiful... So email they can send you to. That's right. That's diction, right. diction coach to the stars. Of the Do you have a website? Opera. Diction, uh, not yet. Uh, diction, uh, drama and diction to the stars, yes. Thank you, thank it's you. It's true because I always worked with professionals and yeah. all, you know, at whichever point of their career. So that has been a privilege to... Maybe to we should do an Amy Goodman. I'll shake your hand. Oh, thank <laughs> you so much. Shake your thank hand. you very much. <laughs> and it's been so much fun. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, interesting. Uh, it's a very special. And thank you for your wonderful facilitator, Roberto. He's really a great facilitator. Mm -hmm. Come down here, you'll meet him, you'll meet all of us and do your own show. Mm -hmm. I hope both of Why you not? might come down and do your show too one day. Mm -hmm. That would be fun. That As would a matter be. of fact. That would be. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely.